Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And welcome to Bethany on this All Saints Sunday. It's good to see all of you. I couldn't help but think as Jeff was playing that it is a good and joyful thing to be in worship at Bethany this morning. Um, I would like to ask John to come forward and talk to us a little bit about the stew. <laughs> we had a great turnout. Everybody that came to help, and some of them aren't here, so they must not. John, John, we had... come over here. The mic's not working. My mama. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's Terry's fault. Anyway, uh, so anyway, um, we had a good turnout. Best I've seen in a while. I think. Do you have enough? Yeah. Okay. I, I came back in the evening, uh, which I would not done before, and I walked in. It looked like it was 200 people in there, and it was all just <laughs> going everywhere and doing stuff. So that was great to see it, the turnout. And we made 1,285 quarts of some delicious stew. So I'm going to thank everybody that turned out. Got your name on the list, so I'm going to get you again in March. <laughs> thank you. Okay, after uh, Mike. after um, the service, the worship, Kim will be downstairs with the baked goods, and we have stew down there if anybody wants some extra stew. Thank you. That's some good stew, y'all. Anybody had it yet? Okay. There was, there was a woman, when we picked up our stew set yesterday morning, there was a woman there who said she had tried all the stew in five counties, at every church in five counties, and Bethany's was the best. <laughs> and another woman came in and said, I had some for breakfast, and I had to come get some more. <laughs> so don't miss out. Come and pick up your stew. Um, please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing, sing to the Lord, Lord a new song. Rejoice and give thanks, thanks for, the for the Lord takes, takes pleasure in the people. people. Hallelujah. Come make a joyful noise. Sing praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come, Come let, let us worship the Lord. the Lord. Our opening hymn is number 103. Thank you.
please remain standing and join me in the opening prayer. Holy, Holy God, God, who calls your people into one beloved community, who teaches us the way of peace through life together, who fills us with visions of your eternal reign, as we now celebrate the communion of saints, pour into our hearts the power of Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out your spirit upon us, O God, with your word enlighten, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we might live in hope through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our epistle lesson this morning is taken from Ephesians first chapter, verses eleven through twenty-three. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to let our hope on Christ, to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised <coughs> Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in, a, in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which in his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God.
you are able for the reading of the gospel, which is found in Luke chapter 6, verses 20 through 31. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Pray with me, please. God of generations past and generations to come, pour out your Holy Spirit of wisdom and revelation upon us that we may fully know the faith to which you have called us and the hope that we have in you. 
Help us to hear and obey the word you have for us this day. Amen. Blessings and woes. We all have them. Sometimes we may feel blessed beyond anything we could possibly have earned. Chris Christopherson had a powerful hit song, Why Me, Lord? And since it's a country song, we might expect the next line to be something like, I've got tears in my ears from lying on my back in my bed while I cried over you. <laughs> Which is in fact a real lyric from a real country song. And it's just possible that it was inspired by Psalm 6. Look it up later. <laughs> But I digress. I bet most of you know that the words following my why me Lord are, what have I ever done to deserve even one of the blessings I've known? And I want you to hold that thought. What have I ever done to deserve even one of the blessings I've known? This is the spirit of humility that will help us to understand Luke's Sermon on the Plain. I'm hoping most of you are familiar with the actor Michael J. Fox. He was Alex P. Keaton on the TV series Family Ties back in the 80s. Yes, I'm old enough to know that. He was Marty McFly from the Back to the Future movies. Or you may simply know him as that actor who has Parkinson's. Fox was diagnosed with Parkinson's after symptoms began to affect him while he was filming Doc Hollywood in 1991. He was 29. I remember seeing an interview with him years later. He said his first reaction was, why me? That sounds about right. He confessed that he spent years in despair, drinking to forget his reality, groaning again and again, why me? Both Christopherson and Fox asked, why me? One in response to his blessings and the other in response to his woes. When Jesus preached his Sermon on the Plain in the Gospel of Luke, he had only just chosen the twelve whom Luke says he called from among his disciples and named them apostles. And then Jesus and the newly appointed apostles, the twelve of them, and the other disciples went down to a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And Jesus looked out at the faces in that vast crowd and proclaimed the Beatitudes. Blessed are you who are poor, who are hungry, who weep, who are hated. Present tense, now, in your poverty, hunger and weeping, now, while you are hated, reviled, excluded, and persecuted, you are blessed. Not that all of those things are blessings, obviously, but those who suffer any of those things are blessed in them while suffering in them. And then, we don't always like to read this sermon in Luke because after the Beatitudes, Jesus addressed the others in the huge crowd and proclaimed the Wobitudes. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full. Woe to you who are laughing now. 
Woe to you when people speak well of you. Again, present tense, now, in your comfortable lives, woe to you. Now you can just imagine that both the rich and the poor in that crowd were thunderstruck. Like, what? What did he just say? Both sides. And we don't get it either. Woe to me because I'm comfortable. Woe because I've worked hard for what I have. Woe because people think well of me. Who doesn't want that? Who wouldn't strive for those things? And that's exactly the point. For the most part, those of us who live in comparative comfort tend to believe that we have all that we have by the work of our own hands because of our strong work ethic. Nobody gave us anything we have. We worked for it. Oh yeah, sometimes some of us remember to thank God for the random circumstances of our lives that have led us to this day and the comforts we enjoy. And sometimes some who are comfortable realize that there have been forces at work that are not of our own conscious making, that have actually made it easier for some like us to succeed while simultaneously making it harder for others to do so. And that is Jesus' point. Those who are rich or comfortably well off are typically the beneficiaries of unjust systems that naturally and necessarily create an impoverished group of people, while the comfortable enjoy the fruits of those hierarchies of power. We who are comfortable may realize that we have benefited from an unjust system, but we don't necessarily want to rock the boat. We don't want to be poor. We don't want to bite the hand that feeds us. And yes, shockingly, many of us who are comfortable don't dare to speak out against the systems that have created and thrive on the power dynamics of rich versus poor because we have put our trust in our status and wealth and not in our God. We are too attached to the comforts of this world. Meanwhile, people who are poor, hungry, weeping, or hated are far more likely to put their entire faith and trust in God. They rely on God's provision. They stay in prayer constantly. They pray for justice. But they wait and pray and trust the power of God to intervene and sustain them. Friends, by desperate, earnest, and constant prayer, the poor place themselves closer to the heart of God. Jesus says that it is against God's will for there to be systems of government that thrive by creating classes of contented and complacent rich people and desperate suffering poor people. Such systems know no peace and can never know peace. We who enjoy the comforts of having enough to eat and a safe place to live are not following Christ if we are content to allow others to be homeless and hungry. Our Christian mission is to change unjust systems everywhere, homes, churches, businesses, governments, so that 
how we all live together will reflect the truth of God to the whole world. Jesus calls us to radical love, radical forgiveness, radical mercy. Love your enemies, he said. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Here and now at Bethany, can we do that? What we receive from God in Christ, radical, undeserved love, forgiveness, and mercy are the only things that ever change anyone or any situation for the better. They don't always change everyone or every situation for the better, but radical love is our best defense and our best offense. Love changes lives. Prayer changes lives. Loving and praying for others, even and especially our enemies, changes those of us who do the radical loving and praying every bit as much as it changes the objects of our love and prayers. In his interview, Fox said that after about seven years of wallowing in self-pity and crying out, why me? He began to ask, well, why not me? So he got help for his drinking, and he started using his fame and his fortune to shine a light on Parkinson's disease. His fundraising and the foundation he created gave a huge boost to research into Parkinson's possible causes and cures. He wrote books. He went back to acting. By his life alone, he has shown that even though bad things often do happen to people we, could, we would ordinarily consider blessed, if we allow our circumstances to be used, God works in the bad situations for the world's good. Fox still has Parkinson's. It continues to wear him away. But he has made a good, productive, and meaningful life despite the challenges of the disease. Parkinson's changed the course of his life. He became a different and a better man. Because he has Parkinson's, Thousands, if not millions of people are living better and longer lives with the disease. We will all have our share of blessings and woes, but we can use life's problems, disasters, inconveniences, to help others, to guide us to help others. Probably not on so grand a scale as Fox did, but each of us has the power to pour out God's radical, undeserved love wherever we are, bringing about changes that we may never actually see come to fruition. Ripple effects of goodness that extend into infinity. Even the small acts of kindness remind people that goodness is still active in the world. We might not be able to change the whole world, but on any ordinary day, like this one, any one of us, just might be the goodness and love of God to one person when they need it the most. And in that moment, we are ordinary saints, the body of Christ. God's word does not go out and then return empty. 
Jesus, the embodied word of God, does not go out and return empty, nor do we, the church, the body of Christ, broken and torn as we are, we do not go out and return empty. Because the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us and among us enables God's word to accomplish God's purposes by the witnesses of the cloud of saints that have gone before us, like those we will honor today, and also by the witness of ordinary, everyday saints right here among us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our hymn of response is For All the Saints, which is found in your little black hymnal. Uh, please stand as you are able. of faith, the Apostles' Creed, found at 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. For the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. I'd just like to send a prayer for my um, husband's aunt. She passed away Friday night. It's a friend.
Um, I want to ask prayers for my friend Paul, who finds himself um, again unhoused. And I want to ask prayers for the family of Michael Spears Jr., who died in the hospital this week. Uh, a prayer for healing for one of our Vets to Vets veterans. Her name is Wanda. She's at Wake Medical Center. She's undergone extensive spinal surgery from the base of her brain due to a tumor. And they have to go back in and do more surgery. So prayer for her healing. I want to thank everybody for all their cards and prayers and well wishes during my before, during, and after my surgery, and also for all the birthday wishes. Thank you very much. And I would like to add my thanks to John's for everyone who worked yes, Friday and yesterday to make the stew a success. Um, the beauty of this stew, I think, and, and actually Gary said this to me, uh, was the community that we enjoy when we're working on it. It brings groups that might not usually spend time together together, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy Lord, we give you thanks for the blessings of health, for the blessings of this day, for the blessing of bodies that work well enough to work and make stew together. For minds that explore your holy word and seek your loving truth. We pray for all those whom we have named who are in special need of your healing, of your loving care, your tender mercies. We pray that they will feel, that they will know the embrace of your arms and the security and the safety that that brings. We pray for those who have lost family members and friends this year who are mourning for whatever reason. We pray for people around the world whose lives are unsettled because of war or job insecurity, or famine, drought. We pray that they will indeed know your blessings in their, in their struggles. We pray for those around the world who are comfortable for those who are rich, for those who are in power. Lord, we pray that your spirit will pour upon them with force, with enlightenment, that we may create systems and ways of living in community together that all may thrive so that none are desperate and that your justice may come upon the earth. 
So we pray for everyone in leadership, whether that is little places of leadership or major places of leadership. Inspire them with your love and your grace and your forgiveness. Remind all of us, Lord, that we are all on our knees before the cross. That none of us is deserving of your love and your forgiveness, of your grace and your mercy. And yet we have come to know you and your heart and your son, Jesus Christ, who is our savior. And by that knowledge, we are given strength to live every day with joy, even in crisis, with faith and hope, even when we are challenged. This is, these are blessings that are beyond our understanding. But we give you thanks and praise your name. May we be instruments of your peace, the Lord, today and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. For the peace and unity of the saints, trusting in the promise of grace, let us confess our sin to God and to one another. God of the covenant, who calls all people to reconciliation, you have made us members of the very body of Christ, yet we persist in wounding that body with our divisions, our suspicions, and our neglect. Forgive us and teach us to nurture unity and peace for the sake of Jesus Christ and the world he came to save. Amen. In the great compassion of our God, the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus has shown us God's forgiveness for our <laughs> sins. Therefore, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Now I invite John again to share a moment of stewardship. We all worship our Lord in different ways. We can come here to church and worship, or we might read a Bible at home and worship. Or we might worship our Lord by doing good deeds in the community. One of those good deeds that we do towards our stewardship um, responsibilities is, uh, well, if you look at that word stewardship, what's the first four letters? <laughs> Steer. And sometime during the morning uh, time, some uh, for those who are not there in the morning, Somebody always blesses the stew so that we'll use it for good things to further our stewardship in the community. And the profits that we make from that, 75% goes to the building fund. And the rest goes to other projects as needed by the church. So we're all stew worshiping <laughs> when we help with the stew. So I appreciate that. And let's continue to do that in the future. In gratitude for the many ways that we are blessed, let us bring God's tithes and our offerings to bring about the kingdom of God come upon the earth.
We're pilgrims on a journey of the narrow road And those who've gone before us line the way Cheering on the faithful, encouraging the weary Their lives a stirring testament to God's sustaining grace Surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses Let those who run their race but for the prize but if those who've gone before us let leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness on to God in grace. And may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we lead lead them to believe. The lies we leave inspire them to obey. And may all who come behind us find us faithful. After all our hopes and dreams have come and gone, our children sift through all we've left behind. May the clues discover, the memories they uncover, become the light that leads them to God's eternal lives. And may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we lead lead them to believe. The lives we leave inspire them to obey. And may all who come behind us find us faithful. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children and our grandchildren. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you. Juanita Jones. Doris Ann Seabolt. Joanne Bowman. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God now and forever. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because we share in this one loaf, we share in the body of Christ. The cup which we share is a sharing in the blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is also for all the saints, but it's the one in your United Methodist hymnal, number 711. We'll sing verses 1, 4, and 6. Please stand as you are able. to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.